The Stockton and Darlington Railway is really the embryo from which all railway development followed in Great Britain and the rest of the world. Uh, and really the reason why the railway was built and constructed was because of coal. My name is Duncan Edwards, I'm an explainer at the Locomotion Museum which is part of the National Railway Museum uh, and uh, the museum's been open now for seven years. My job is to work with schools, take groups around for tours and just generally talk to the, the public. In the museum we have a cross-section of locomotives. The, probably the most famous locomotive <coughs> from that competition was Rocket, built by George Stevenson. George Stevenson came from a small place called Wylam, uh, which is where Timothy Hackworth was born as well. And he worked himself up working in the collieries there. He, uh, he taught himself basically engineering and uh, he then went on to work uh, developing steam locomotives. He became famous throughout the country because he built railways including the Stockton Darlington and the Liverpool Manchester Railway. Coal was vitally important in the uh, 19th century so they had to get they had to get this coal from Shildon down to the Tees and the nearest point on the Tees was Stockton and uh, the Great and the Good of Stockton and Darlington put their heads together and in 1810 there was a grand meeting in uh, Stockton to discuss how the uh, transport of coal could be facilitated from the coal field down to Stockton on Tees. The initial idea had been to build a horse-drawn wagonway uh, down to the Tees, but on the 19th of April 1821 George Stevenson came down from Newcastle to meet uh, Edward Pease and to, he convinced Pease to use steam locomotives uh, on the railway. Stevenson had been involved with locomotive development up on the time where there, where there were several short uh, railways bringing coal from the pits down to the stays at the riverside. So he'd got quite a bit of experience in the development of steam locomotives. And his argument was so persuasive that uh, Pease and backers decided they would go ahead with construction of a line using steam power for the attraction. The locomotion number one was the first locomotive uh, used on the Stockton Downton Railway. The inaugural journey was on the 27th of September, 1825 and the journey started from Shildon, travelling through Darlington and on to Stockton. Um, locomotion number one was built by George Stevenson at his uh, factory in Newcastle and uh, it was, as I said, used on the inaugural journey. Uh, you can see from its design that it doesn't look much like a, a steam locomotive as we imagine it today. Firstly, the first thing I think you'll notice is it's got vertical cylinders. The cylinders go up and down like that. It wasn't a madly efficient uh, method of powering the, the locomotive and very shortly afterwards uh, you find that uh, they are moving more in the direction of horizontal cylinders such as you find in modern locomotives today. Uh, so the, the, the cylinders and the gearing is a little bit strange. One other thing which is a little bit strange, um, the locomotive is not provided with brakes. Uh, the wagons behind the locomotive had brakes, but not the locomotive itself. And the only way you could actually stop the locomotive was by disconnecting the steam power and disconnecting the gears. And there was a fair amount of friction and eventually the locomotive would, would come to a standstill. Shildon was um, the starting point of the, of the first journey on the Stockton Darlington Railway. Uh, George Stevenson uh, drove the locomotive. Uh, Timothy Hackworth uh, waved the flag for the initial journey. Uh, it was the point where different railway lines converged so that steam locomotives could take 
the children, the coal wagons, from uh, Shildon onto Stockton. And so it became known as the first railway town in the world. Okay, the picture that you can see uh, is a picture of the opening day of the Stockton and Darlington Railway, 27th of September, 1825. And over on the far right, you can see locomotion number one, which was the first engine to haul that first train. That locomotive was built at George Stevenson's works up in Newcastle, and believe it or not, was brought down by horse and cart to Highington and put on the rails there. Anyway, there it is, pulling the first train, and you can see a long line of wagons. Those wagons are really intended for transporting coal, but of course on this opening day they are full of uh, people celebrating this great event. Uh, the train is crossing the Skern Bridge, which is still there today. This bridge was built in 1825, and it is still in use today, taking the trains from Darlington up to Bishop Auckland. Of course, the surroundings in which the bridge are now situated are not quite as rural and green as they are in this picture. We are talking, uh, really here, of the equivalent of present-day space travel. Nobody had ever seen anything like this before. A machine which could pull so many people and so many wagons at an amazing speed of probably 12 miles an hour. We know that uh, this locomotive did explode in 1828, so the boiler has been replaced. And of course, various other things will have been replaced, uh, but it is still pretty well a nearly 200 year old locomotive. And now it can be found in its present condition at um, Head of Steam in Darlington. 